Welcome back to uh, Watercolor Studio uh, 42. And uh, today um, I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about um, uh, the drawing aspects. A lot of people, uh, when I talk to them, sometimes they say, oh, gosh, I can't, I can't draw a straight line. I said, well, how about using a ruler? <laughs> or any straight edge, uh, smooth smooth edge and what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm going to sh uh, kind of show you a little bit uh, the process of how I go about sometimes doing pictures uh, I do uh, uh, well I have been doing a lot of uh, sort of stylistic type things lately and uh, they, they, they fit into contemporary homes no matter what the subject is it's the style that you use. Uh, uh, you can uh, take a regular landscape or seascape uh, painting, and if you use uh, a different approach to it, how you, how, how you design it, uh, you can make it look uh, sort of like a contemporary painting. And most homes that are built today are designed mostly for contemporary, not tr uh, the traditional type of uh, uh, architecture. So um, having said that, uh, I'm just going to kind of go through this a little bit and uh, uh, show you uh, kind of my approaches. Now, when you're starting out, you have to have probably something in mind as to the subject. And if, I, if I'm doing a, uh, a, a scene that's uh, woodland or something like that, then uh, I kind of think trees and bushes and whatnot. And uh, so uh, now when you're working, you work, so I use a ruler, a straight edge. And of course, there's different types of lines. Uh, the direction of the line can be uh, vertical up and down horizontal going across or diagonal and I always try to work uh, some sort of like a diagonal pattern uh, into my uh, painting so it creates a little bit of movement that diagonal line creates some movement so I'm just going to put a diagonal now I'm drawing this with a pencil first that's if uh, uh, you want to be cautious about it uh, do the uh, picture in pencil first then if you want to outline it with a marker which I'll do uh, when I start uh, on another piece of paper. But the diagonal line, then you got your ver uh, vertical up and down, goes up and down, and then uh, what you have uh, is a horizontal line. Now the horizontal can be moved uh, up and up and down. Uh, if you're doing a primarily uh, just a sky painting, then probably the land uh, uh, line would be down lower and you save uh, two-thirds of, of the uh, paper probably made up of the uh, sky so anyway so you got your v vertical diagonal which i introduce quite often and you'll see it, how it works today um, and then uh, you've got your uh, back and forth horizontal and uh, so, and I'm, I'm always thinking in thirds a lot of times, three of this, uh, three of that, or five of this, or whatever it might be, trees or objects of sort. Uh, now, um, so talking about the line. Now, another thing too, of course you can uh, work your line short, or you can make them extended. And the way, way you set it up, um, if you have something in mind, like an abstract design or whatever it might be, uh, then you can work uh, uh, verticals, uh, horizontal lines, and diagonals, so forth, just to break it up. But you always want to know where the center of your paper is, so you're always working a little bit off of the off center. You know, a little bit above center, below center, or a little bit to the left of center, or a little bit to the right of center. So that's what you might be doing. Uh, now, uh, I've, d I've drawn the lines a little bit darker than I normally would uh, just to show up maybe on TV. But of course, now you can go back over uh, if you want to make the, the uh, so called line. Uh, um, permanent then you, you put your ruler down on on your pencil line and just 
draw down on that. Now you're getting a, a, a darker edge, but you're using a permanent marker, so that you're committed to that. You, there's no erasing that line. That's that's going to stay there. That's why I suggest maybe doing your uh, sketch light and pencil first, and then go over it if you want uh, with your marker. Okay, we'll put this down. Hold your rule so it doesn't wiggle, and it, there you can put in your uh, 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 vertical line, and then uh, horizontal goes across. How far you go across, that's up to you. And then you could vary off of this. You can put short lines, longer lines, whatever you want to do. Uh, with the design, whatever you're thinking about doing. That looks like a clothesline or, tele or the old type of t television antennas uh, that they used to put on the roof. But uh, the thing is that uh, that's the way it works. Now, with your marker, uh, sometimes the marker has a, uh, a wider edge, so you could, let's see if this makes a difference. I'm, I'm using the, the w wide edge of the marker. Okay, that's that line. Now turn it around and use the thin edge. Let's see if it makes a difference. Yeah, see the difference between the width of the line? It's qu quite, a, quite a difference there. So you can use the marker that way. Then you have your regular um, uh, uh, marker. If I can find one here. They, oh, hiding. Okay, you can use that. And that makes a fairly thin uh, fine line. It, oops, that's a little bit too fine. I think this, <laughs> this mark it might be drying out, yeah. But it makes just a very thin line. Okay, then you can use a regular pen if you, if you uh, have nothing else. Just a uh, dark ink pen or whatever color. Uh, and you can get a thin line with a pen also just barely shows up uh, but you could use a pen so anyways uh, that, that's uh, kind of doing a picture with uh, just lines straight edges that's it and um, um, as far as uh, be able to draw if you can print a B C's and all that you could certainly uh, uh, draw because uh, those are the shapes that we use a lot. You know, like the O, um, uh, uh, the number O or the letter O, drawing a circle. You can practice drawing circles. I usually hold a pencil on the side. Just keep rotating around until you get, get the thing working. Really, you know, a nice circle. Or you could do ovals, you know, go this way. Uh, you can work, work it that way. Um, but uh, so th that's the way you might want to go about doing it as far as uh, uh, saying that you can't draw a straight edge and I all I, I usually say sometimes well um, if you can't really draw a straight line that draw a wiggly line they have more character you know so uh, I toss that in once in a while in conversation with people. Uh, okay, now um, I have to kind of in my mind th a little bit w w what I might want to do. And uh, I'm going to try to make this uh, somewhat uh, like a uh, stylistic painting, kind of contemporary, but it's going to be a subject about woodland and maybe a uh, little pass or a brook running through it. So um, where do we start? We have to know approximately where center is of your paper. I'll put a dot there just to remind myself. And then um, I have to decide uh, two, uh, two, two thirds maybe sky, maybe one third, you know, like that. So the ground is going to be, and I'll do this in pencil first. I'm going to make the ground line, and you don't have to make it uh, straight across. Just make it a little bit bumpy. See how you can m manipulate the ruler around? 
make it maybe a hill coming down here. So here I, here I am using the straight edge of the ruler. Now, um, if I want to put a little brook or a stream in there, probably that's where I'd introduce the, uh, the uh, diagonal line, the line that moves. And so you can have the little stream coming in like this, go that way, and have it come out this way, okay? And then, of course, uh, if it's close to you, the width of, of the, uh, the brook or the stream appears to be uh, wider, and as it goes back, it kind of vanishes. So let's make uh, another line here. We'll put another line up there and have the brook kind of meander up that way, okay? Now that could be very easily be a road. You could put a, a road in there if you wanted to. Now, um, but I, I'm gonna try to make that look like water. Let's put another line in there to break that up. Uh, we can do something <clears throat> with this. Again, you can use the ruler um, for most all your edges. Just turn it a little bit, bring it down there. Um, now, you're going to have trees in the foreground, so uh, the trees that are uh, closest to you are going to be towards the uh, lower part of your, uh, your paper. So you might have a tree, and I, I try to make the trees lean into the picture, you know, have them bend into the picture a little bit, so maybe a tree goes that way. Uh, another one goes this way, coming into the painting. You can have something straighter if you want, um, but it's not overly necessary. I'll put something coming out of there. Um, one, two, three, the uneven number again. And one, two, three, four, well, <laughs> I broke it up a little bit. Five was the big space of the uh, backgrounds. and. Uh, so as far as the background goes, you want to put a hill in there. I don't put the, I, I wouldn't put the hill right smack in the middle, offset it a little bit. So probably, let's have a line. We can put a, a hill or a mountain, whatever you want to call it. You can have the angle go that way, and then this way, not quite as steep. And that's a little bit off center because there's your center approximately somewhere in here. Uh, then, um, we could have something else going. Let's put another something back here and over here. Now, even when you do the uh, the uh, clouds, you can break that up too. Uh, if you want to put a, a, a cloud in here or whatever, you, you just break it up, make it look uh, so, some softer straight edges around that. So, so far I'm using the rule for everything. Now. I could probably work a little bit more uh, with the detail, but um, I have to figure in the time factor too. So let's just go over the lines that I have put in. Now I, I could still deviate a little bit and add a little bit more to it as we go, uh, because I've only put straight one straight line for the trees and I can show them a little bit more character with filling it in. So uh, I'll start down here. This is gonna be uh, the edge of the brook, okay? That's in there. Um, fill this in here. I'm using a marker, I don't know if it's got enough ink in it or not, or whether it's starting to dry out. I put the, go over that line, go over this line, okay. Now, if you go over a line a little bit or don't stay on the pencil mark, that doesn't matter because you're going to paint over, probably cover most of that in anyways. So, break it up. And then I have a tree going in here. I've got something else coming out of here. You notice how I'm leaning them in uh, so that they stay in the, in the picture a bit. And then there's the background. Now, if you want to make that a little thinner, I suppose you could use um, our wider. You want to make that a little heavier, you can use a, a different marker. And you, you use the width of it a little bit more. This is a thin edge. Then I'm gonna make it wider 
off here and disappears off to, off to the edge of the paper, something like that. Okay, so now we have all these lines. Let's go over this one, make that heavier. That marker was a little bit drying out. Okay, that's a little bit heavier there. So this is what I'm ending up with here. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's very abstract in a way. It's very geometric, so to speak. Now, if you want to add a few uh, whoops, <laughs> lines in here, you can you know, show how the, the uh, um, branches are gonna, uh, gonna be coming out. And uh, down here, as you get lower, the the branches kind of get heavy, so they kind of they straighten out by the time you get to the bottom. Let's fill this one in over here a little bit. Now, you can take your time doing this so that you don't uh, kind of mess up too much with uh, putting in too many lines going the wrong way. There you go, something like that. Uh, what not? Oh, was, I forgot to go over this line here. Show some of the, yeah. And that can be a road or, or a river. And then we indicated we, we've got some clouds up here, which is to break that up with some, kind of some broken edges there. Uh, you always want to know where the light source is coming, so if you want to put shadows in. Um, I'm going to just add another tree in here. So I have three of something. Now you could draw this pretty good with a free hand if you don't want to use a ruler. Get used to, you know, you just, just draw some straight lines and uh, whatnot. Now, um, so we have something like this to, to work from. Uh, now, I have to decide what I'm gonna do. Now most of this is gonna be, if you want snow, you can kind of leave the uh, pa paper white and then uh, I'll just work in the sky. Now where I want a cloud to stay in there, I don't paint blue everywhere. But let's start uh, and, and, and see what we can do up here. Just wet your paper with water. Okay, so it's gonna be all sky back here. Now you could you can leave some openings. You don't ha uh, have to have it all solid in color. And also, you might want to determine where you want the light source to be coming from. I'm usually uh, bringing it in from left to right across. I say it because I'm left-handed, and that's the way kind of we read mostly. Uh, you know, you're reading from left to right. So I got in the habit of having the, the sky lighter up here somewhere. You know, put a little bit of yellow up there. Whoops, <laughs> want to put a little bit more than that. There you go, put some yellow up in here. And, uh, what not? You can wet the paper. They call it a wash. Put a wash on. And, uh, if you wanted to dry faster, don't put too, too much water on. Or if you do, take a paper towel and just blot it a bit because you want that to dry out more. This, this you can leave a little bit whiter for the cloud or something going by. In fact, you can actually put the clouds in too, you know, if you want. Now, this is up to you how much color you want to give to the sky. Um, if you want to add a little bit of yellow, uh, I, I've already done yellow, I'm sorry. You add some orange, put some orange in there. Bring it across here, like that. Warm it up a bit. It's funny when you do a winter scene, uh, you can have a, a warm colors, you know, like a sunset or sunrise, and you still make the picture look cold. You know, it's cool. You know it's winter. Okay, let's go right to the edge here. I put tape around it so it makes a false, uh, like a false mat for your artwork. But you can drop. Now that's up to you if you want to put a little bit of speck, speck of red in the way. Oops. 
There you are. Put some, put a little bit of red in the sky too. I'm going kind of easy on it. <laughs> I don't want to overdo it. Yeah, get some red in there. And th that can reflect a little bit on the ground too. You know, when you do the snow, just put some, you know, some hints of color, the reflection uh, from the sky. Let me just add a little bit in there. Just a little bit. Okay, now, um, I paint very fluid a lot of times, and I don't always stay uh, within the line. You, you can uh, go over a line. It's not like you're going to be real tight like a coloring book. You know, stay inside the lines and so forth. Uh, this is just a, a background uh, coloring. And so uh, you could keep it very loose if you want and uh, blot it. I blot it a lot of times just to get the colors uh, to dry faster for me. And like I was saying, you could still, if you want, use your uh, brush like a sponge and you could drag it through there and you can make it lighter, you know, if you want. Uh, and then make sure you blot it. Um, here you go, right across through here. Blot it down and uh, uh, go from there. Now, you can always um, add more, okay? You can always add more color. You can add more detail. That's up to you how much, you know, extra you want to do with it. Um, so, anyhow. Um, I don't always carry a green with me. So, uh, having said that, I have to take a little bit of my blue. I use thalo blue. So it's like a cerulean blue. It's sort of a, a lighter uh, shade of blue. And... Um, brighter shade and you can uh, do a, a little bit of uh, mixing uh, with your one of your brushes here let's see if I can find one I uh, will use this one round brush and you could take a little bit of yellow put that in the middle here somewhere and then take a speck of uh, uh, blue. Now, when you're mixing colors, you, or, or two colors together to make a third color, uh, I always start with, with the lighter color and add the dark to it. Don't start dark and then add the uh, light color to it. To, to, it's easier to go this way. So I've just got a little bit of uh, a blue and I'm getting a sort of a, a greener color. Probably what I want to mix. Um, so you can determine if you want it to be a little darker, you can add a little bit more blue. Or if you want to make it lighter, uh, a lighter shade of green. I'm going to just clean the brush off here. Go back into the yellow and just add more yellow in, into the blue and get it to turn a little bit uh, lighter shade of green. Let's, now, I'm just going to uh, go over the trees a bit here, okay? So let's start off with some green. Now, all I've done is straight edges. Now, when I put the color in, though, I could kind of ease up a little bit. I don't have to stay on the green. Uh, I don't have to make them that straight. See, just put some color in there uh, like this. Okay, do the little one in the background here. Just add some green into it. I stay within that triangle shape of the tree. Fill it in a little bit more. Okay, put a little point up there. You have to be careful. If the sky is still a little bit wet, you have to be a little bit careful with that. Get a little bit more green out in through here. Kind of make it go out to a point more. Okay. You can work on that a little bit more. And we'll do this one over here. Fill that in. 
You can kind of stay, but go back and forth if you want. Or you can fill it in solid and then pull the edges out. Put a little bit more water on the brush here. See, I, I did, made it solid, but you can pull through that and just bring it out a little bit more. But kind of windshield wipers going back and forth here. Okay, go up a little bit in there. Now it's up to you how much you want to. Now see what happened here. That runs a little bit. Um, that's because the background color was still wet. So if you catch it in a hurry, you can blot that out. Blot that out. And uh, just touch it up a little bit more. Go back into it with some green in there. And just fill it in. Um, I'm going to need a little bit more yellow and a pinch of blue. Okay. Now you can make this darker shade too. You can put, especially on the shadow side, if there's lights coming from the left, then the shadows can be a little bit darker on, on the right side. Something like that. It's kind of wet there, so I have to be careful. I don't blur, keep blurring. Pull that out. Yeah, back and forth, windshield wipers. Okay. Go right up. Now, if this, this tree needs any touch up, uh, we can get to that a little bit later because I got some white paint and we could put some snow in there. Uh, a little bit more than what it looks like now. And go up to the top. Make it a little wider at the base. Can be on a shadow, shadow in there. Same with this one. Yeah, you can start at the bottom if you want. And work up. Pull it out a little bit more. With trees, you don't have to be overly fussy because they... They kind of twist and bend a little bit from the weight of the snow and affected by the wind sometimes, whatever. And just the weight of the, the branches, after a while they get kind of droopy down near the bottom. They start to flatten out a bit. Uh, now this is up to you if you want to just put a little bit more blue, straight blue, just go back to the blue. And you put a little bit of blue into it. Like a blue, blue spruce, right? Yeah. You know, I don't know if you want to go that that much into it, but, you know, you could do that. You want to add some blue into it. Um, especially around the base. We're going to put some shadow in there eventually. Okay, here we go. Now, um... This can be open water here. It could be open water, uh, but you can leave a few little flakes of uh, or patches of white to re uh, represent maybe broken ice or whatever you want to do with that. Make sure your brush is really cleaned out. And you can wet this, wet it with a relatively clean water. Okay, go up there a little bit. And uh, that's it. Now, um, what we could do here, um, take some of your blue, might have a little green in it, I don't know, and just go over this where the water's supposed to be. Now, if you, like I said, if you want to leave uh, a little bit of uh, white in there, it could be some frozen little pieces of ice or whatever. You can do that while it's wet. Okay. You can also take a, a credit card. Sometimes it's just take the card and just pull it through there. I could get the same effect if I, with a brush. Let me just... Use a uh, maybe a flatter brush would work better. 
Let's see what we can do. You take that brush, use it like a sponge, and just pull through that and make it look more like ice. Ice on the water. Just take some of that blue out. Now, blue does stain, so you have to kind of sometimes catch it before it can settle into the paper. Just kind of pull it out a little bit. Go up here a ways. Right up in there. All right, now, uh, some other things that help a lot was when, when you start putting shadow in. And uh, if you've got the light source coming from this side, put an arrow there. Sometimes I remind myself, put some arrow, uh, an arrow on the tape where the sun's coming in from. And then you could sh put in some of the shadows. Now the shadows can be, oh, sort of a, a neutral color in a way. I suppose you could use a little bit of the uh, blue. You could take a little bit of the blue and mix it in with maybe some Payne's gray, sort of a bluish gray. Put it up on the edge, see what it looks like. And that could be some of the shadow. Oops, that's too strong. Wait a minute. Yeah, you need some more black in that, it's too much blue. So we could pull that down. Um, let's see if I can get rid of that. Um, pull some of that out. I, I don't mind having some blue there, but probably a little bit too strong. And uh, you can make the uh, cast shadow of the tree. It can be sort of a little bit distorted make that probably darker underneath the base here. And same way, the, again, the shadow's got to be falling to the, uh, on an angle to the right. That can put some shadow under there. Take some of that blue out of here and transfer it underneath this tree over here. This one can have some shadow too falling across, a little bit like that. But the shadows that you put in really make a painting a lot of times. And shadows for, from anything, a building or, or even the shadows of a person walking sometimes, you add that little shadow in there, it makes a difference. Now, um, I can use also some of that uh, uh, blue. I'm, I'm getting more blue than, than the gray here. Uh, <laughs> try it. Now here's the shadow side on the on the mountain there, there, over here, kind of to your left, and you can get some of that in. I want to pull that down though; it's a kind of a hard edge. Take some of the color out of that, and kind of there's a little bit of uh, darker shadow down around here. You really have to get out there, I guess, and uh, look at some of the things. What's happening? Now that I'm using Payne's gray a little bit, maybe we could introduce some of that gray into the shadow under here. Bluish gray, mix it right on the paper. Put that in there. And over here. Now, this, this is sort of somewhat contemporary in a way. Uh, because I've used, broken it up um, uh, geometrically more so. Um, than you normally would. But it could, it could be more uh, abstract if you want. You, can, you don't have to use the uh, local color too. You can kind of deviate the color uh, a little bit more. Um, I don't know if I can drag some of this in here. Go it in down around the base. There's be shadows in the valley, you know, in the valley of the uh, a picture. And then uh, you might you might have a little bit of reflection, possibly of the tree, maybe on the ice. I don't know if I can put that in soft enough. Just enough of the tree in there, reflecting here across the ground. You know. That get that give it that effect. Now, it might need uh, to me. It might need some more interest going back here. So this is where you can uh, come back and do more 
maybe in the sky. Put something across the sky here. Let me see if I can fill that in a little bit more. Does that perk it up? <laughs> I don't know. It might. A little bit of a wash across there. And down around and through here, just to fill that in. You could put more clouds in there too, obviously, if you want. But that kind of does perk it up a bit. And seeing that we're doing the sky uh, a little bit brighter, you could take that same color and reflect it on the water. Right in, oops, need more of the color than that. Just a little bit of a hint of that sky color down in through here. And probably across, maybe some on the snow. Okay, let's get a little closer to the tree here. Fill it in. Sometimes you could do this a little bit ahead of time uh, with the, uh, the sky. Oops, get this out of the way. All right. There we go. Put some more pink up in there. I'm just using a little bit of pink. Just a little bit of, perk it up a bit. Even in the winter, you know, you get some beautiful sunsets. Uh, you know, uh, very warm colors. Uh, uh, even though it's co cold as all get out, uh, you can have a warm sunset. Yeah, I don't know if I want to leave that white in there. I suppose I could. See what happens. Okay, now <clears throat> as far as uh, the rest goes, we can add a little bit more of that warm color on, across the snow, reflecting some of the sky in there. Okay, now when this dries out, you can also go across it and um, do a little bit more with the, uh, the marker. If you want to add, you, right now it's wet, so uh, uh, the marker doesn't work on, 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 if the uh, paint's wet or the uh, paper has water on it. But you can, later on, you could put some little, maybe little footprints in the snow, um, animals walking, um, uh, you know, some flakes on the ground, whatever. Uh, you could do a little bit of uh, uh, work with the ice. Uh, you could show that be frozen over a little bit more with, uh, let's see if I can work this, put some of those streaks in there. Oh, I don't know, still wet. It's still wet, it's a little bit tricky to do put something in, but you can sort of um, double back once the trees dry out, you can go back and define it a little bit more. Might want to put a couple of birds in the sky, you know, whatever you want to add to the picture. But um, that's more or less uh, what you have to do. Now, here's the thing, if you put a, a margin around there, sort of a false margin. You do have to kind of sh have a little bit more color uh, around the edge, just to contrast a little bit more. So it, we'll just paint around. Up here is right to the edge, pretty much. Uh, down here, we want to add a little bit more color. Oh, not that much. <laughs> That's a little bit much. Uh, let's wipe it off. It can be a little bit darker if there if you want. I'll blot it off a little bit. <laughs> you carried away with the paint that sometimes. Uh, you want this to be a little bit darker shade, or maybe you can wiggle some of that paint that's still on the brush out. Put a little bit of an edge. You could do different things with it. You could have twigs sticking up. Again, if you do that, uh, make sure you use your uh, uh, marker or, or a pen. This, yeah, this is a, put some things in the straight edge, things like that. You can add some texture into that if you want. 
have some things coming out of here. You straight edge, more or less. Uh, if you need to uh, clean up the top, it's still wet a little bit, but you can kind of clean that up a little bit more. So, so forth. But that gives, just gives you an idea um, how you can uh, draw uh, with a straight edge, with a ruler. You don't, you know, you don't have to do it freehand. I do, I do just about any subject you want. I even sometimes do flowers just using the ruler, straight edges for the petals and all that. Uh, touch it up a little bit. And then um, once you feel like you've finished up enough, like I said, you can try to pull through here. I usually scrape it with a uh, piece of uh, piece of plastic. Uh, now, uh, very carefully, I'm going to try to remove some of the tape here. I kind of fold the tape back so it's easy to pull off. I say that sometimes it, you have to make sure that you, you get the tape that's on the top. top not, not try to pull it from underneath. However, some down the side here. That will loosen up this bottom part. There you go. Get that off there. And let's so lift the tape off of here. That should come up. Wait a minute. Oh, uh, I see what happened. It went around the edge too much. Hmm. Interesting. Well, let's try the other end. Let's see what we can do. Make sure your hands are, don't have paint on them because you'll put fingerprints on the white part. Ah, now we can pull that edge up. Take this off. I think. Yeah, okay. Ah, there we go. Now, putting a white mat around anything. <laughs> you can spill paint on the paper sometimes. I'm just kidding, exaggerating a little bit. But you can put anything. Now, see where? I didn't put any uh, uh, shading up and through here. So the white of the cloud uh, kind of goes into the mat. So if you have that happen, you know what I do? Put a piece of the tape back. Put it right back over here, right on that the line that you had for the uh, for the margin, and then I take uh, any old color. Well, not just any old color, but let's just take a little bit of a warmer color and just put that across in here. And let's see, see if I can pull that out, pull it down a little bit, and you can put that across there. Um, a clean piece of towel somewhere? Not really. <laughs> Maybe I could take a piece of from underneath here. There we go. And what I'm just going to do is blot that so the paint dries faster. And, oops, take that and then carefully remove the tape. And now you've got the, the contrast with the edge again. You can go a little bit darker than what I did there, but that, that kind of brings that out. So that's a kind of a quick uh, uh, painting. Uh, normally you can take your time and, and slow down a bit and uh, do it a little bit slower. Uh, but uh, again, it's just the idea. Uh, now. Uh, I've got a couple of seconds left. I just want to show you. Sometimes you can take uh, your paper and fold it. And it, let's say if you wanted to make something um, look symmetrical on the other side, just fold it. And uh, let's say if you wanted to do a tree, just draw one side of a tree like this. And then take a pair of scissors and cut that out. And when you open it up, you get the other half, and so automatically you get the, the symmetrical uh, shape of a tree. Just about anything you can do. 
Now, another thing, too, um, you could take, I'm not going to use the, um, um, the ruler, but you could put in another tree. Uh, it doesn't have to be a fir tree, just a regular tree, but make sure the lines are straight and, and just put in a, a different type of tree there. And what I usually use is like a Y shaped, use a Y shape for the branches. Okay, let's put another one back here. Just, just put some branches on using Y shapes. You have it like that. So you can add something else in there. I, I put two, uh, another uh, two trees in, so you have one, two, three, four, five. Again, sort of an uneven number. Now, you don't have to do that if uh, a lot of times uh, you have so many trees that you wouldn't be able to count them anyways. You know, the, the wood, woods are so you know, cluttered with branches and trees. You can't, so what, what you do is just make it sort of like a solid type of line. But by adding something else other than uh, what you have there, it just helps fill in that space. And uh, uh, you, can, you can make it a little bit wider if you want, down near the trunk of the trees, uh, because they, they go from thick to thin on, on, on their branches. So th that's how you would work that. So uh, if anybody says to you um, that uh, they, they have trouble drawing a, a straight line, remind them, use a ruler. And you can, like I said, you can make just about anything uh, with a ruler. I'll show you how I do the flower because we got a couple of minutes here. Um, I go this way, oops, I, I'm picking up that one that doesn't have much ink left. Here we go, use a darker one, okay. I, I go this way, kind of fill it in across here. You can see how you can make a flower by make, connecting it and closing in around the outside. You can make, so, and put a stem on it and even the leaf can be made up of straight edges also. The leaves, you know, but you can make up a flower and then um, take your, some color. You want to make a, a red flower, you just fill it in. Just fill it in with some paint and uh, make it like a flower. Just fill in around it go in around it, and you can make like a flower. So, and just use these straight edges, whatnot. But when you fill it in, you don't have to make straight edges. And what I do a lot of times, I take uh, the flower, take a piece of paper towel, and before it can dry out, I just blot it so that you can get some different shades of uh, pink or red or whatever the flower color is and p put some shadows on it, whatnot. But, um, so don't worry about it. If you have a ruler, a pencil, some paint, you can uh, do just about anything with straight edges, okay? So this is how we finished up. Now, I tried to put a couple of birds in there earlier, but uh, I didn't have uh, the paint dry enough. So now, now that's dry, just put a couple of birds flying over here. A couple of little V shapes, you know. Yeah, that's kind of not interesting. Again, um, maybe one, two, maybe, maybe uh, three. Got three birds in there now. Okay, and I guess I'm just gonna see how this works. You could put some lines across here a little bit just to show that that's sort of like ice there. But it's better, I, I use a, usually use a, a piece of plastic and just plow through it, dr draw through it a little bit to make that look like ice. Okay, so that's about it for this day and um, I'll probably come back uh, next time. We'll, we'll do another winter scene. Uh, and I may do that using straight edges again. But we can, uh, we can just uh, 
maybe put some buildings or something in the, in the picture, like a bridge or, you know, a covered bridge or something like that. But uh, I like doing winter scenes because you can utilize using the white of the paper. You can put white in there. If you want to put uh, like a little bit of white on the trees, you can, uh, once it dries a little bit more, you can just take your brush. I got some white acrylic paint. You just add some paint, some uh, little patches of uh, snow on the branches. You know, it works out pretty well. Okay, so I guess I got, I've got to pack up here and uh, call it a day. And uh, I hope that you have the opportunity to do a little drawing and painting. And remember, use a straight edge. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> You make some interesting paintings with using a ruler and just coloring it in, okay? So, now, my I usually say uh, my, uh, whatchamacallit, let's pick up a brush, how about this one? Okay, so brush is up, and we'll see you again next time, okay? Thanks for being with us.